Hi, my name is Alvin Alexander, and this is my video series, 12 Things Java Developers Should Know About Scala. This is part one of the series, the Scala REPL. To get started, just type Scala at the command line. This starts the REPL environment, where REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. This is also known as the Scala interpreter. If you've used IRB with Ruby, this is the same concept. Simply put, the REPL is a playground where you can type commands and they're interpreted for you. For instance, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And 2 is 2 equal to 4? Uh, no, it's not. To demonstrate a little Scala, we'll create a simple variable. In this case, the traditional hello world greeting. Right away, there are several things to notice. First, there's no need for a semicolon at the end of the statement. Second, I didn't have to specify the type. I just typed my expression, and Scala automatically determined that the variable A should be a string. Features like this make Scala feel like a simple scripting language. In Scala, there are two types of variables. In this case, I created a var. In a few moments, I'll show you how to create the other variable type, but for now, it's just important to know that this is a var, and you can reassign a var. For instance, I can reassign this variable to a new string. The second variable type is called val, or value. You declare a val just like you declare a var, but the difference is that val is just like a final variable in Java. To demonstrate this, we'll create a simple integer value. Unlike a var, you can't reassign a val, so if I try to reassign i, I'll get this error message. So what you do with vals is create a series of expressions, something like this. However, when you're experimenting in the REPL, there's often no need to create variables like this. If you just type an expression, the REPL will automatically create variables for you. So typing something like x minus y automatically creates a variable res1 for me. And if I continue to create new expressions, the REPL will continue to create new variables for me. Each of those statements created a new variable, so now I have res1 through res4, and I can use them just like variables I created myself, for instance, uh, res1 times res3. Before we go, three more notes on the REPL environment. First, you can use the up and down arrows to navigate through previous commands. And you can get help by typing colon help at the command line. Third, you can easily see a list of methods for a given type. For instance, I can see the methods on an int by typing one dot and then the tab key. This shows a list of methods on an int instance. Also, you can type in part of the name of a method and then hit tab. For example, let's create a very small list and then look at the methods available on a list instance. That's a long list, but I know that the method I'm looking for begins with the letters TO. So I can just type in TO, hit the tab key, and bam, now I just see the methods beginning with TO, like to array, to buffer, and so on. Here's a quick summary of what we looked at. We showed how to start the Scala interpreter from the command line. This started up the REPL environment, and REPL stands for Re-Evaluate Print Loop. You can think of the REPL as being a playground for your Scala experiments. In Scala, there are two types of variables. First, there's the var, which is a variable you can reassign. A var can initially point to one data element, then another, and another. Second, there's val, which is like final in Java, meaning you can't reassign the reference to point to a new value. If a val points to one set of data initially, can it later be changed to point to something else? No, not going to happen. When you write Scala, you typically write a series of simple expressions, such as x equals 10, y equals 2, z equals x plus y. With Scala's simple syntax, automatic typing, and this expression-oriented approach, Scala feels like a scripting language. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Scala, the REPL environment, variables, and values. My name is Alvin Alexander. I've written the Scala cookbook, and you can find me at alvinalexander.com. Thank you.